Hi, I'm Steve Venner, G0TAN. I provide technical and engineering support to Martin Lynch & Sons here in Chertsey. Today I'm going to introduce to you a brand new product, a um, super little product, called a SARC 110. It's a vector impedance antenna analyzer. Okay. So, here we have it. This is what I'm going to uh, talk to you about today. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use, what you can use it for, and why you should buy one. Okay, as you can see, it's actually quite tiny. It's a pocket-sized instrument for measuring, among other things, vector impedance, uh, VSWR, vector reflection coefficients, uh, return loss, and even RLC equivalent circuits. Uh, typical applications include the checking and tuning of antenna, uh, cable fault location, locating, measuring coax cable loss, um, if you're into it, cutting coax cables to precise elect electrical lengths, etc. As you can see, it's got a, a neat um, colour display, uh, which along with the other controls, which I'm going to talk about in a short while, has been designed to be intuitive and very easy to use. On the display you can view up to two user selectable parameters such as uh, VSWR, impedance etc. Uh, the display can be selected to be either a rectact rectangular pattern or a more complex Smith chart form if you're into that sort of thing. There are also two markers which help speed up measurements uh, and these are either user positionable or they can be set to auto track various parameters. There's an internal 2 megabyte flash disk for storage and recall of measured parameters. The flash disk can be accessed via a PC connected via a USB cable, which is actually supplied with the unit. All the stored parameters can then be downloaded for further analysis. The frequency range for this unit is from 100 kHz all the way up to 230 megahertz. Okay, so what do you get for your hard-earned cash, I hear you ask. What's in the box? Well, first of all, you have the unit itself, obviously. You also have an adapter cable, BNC to uh, what connects to the side port of the uh, analyzer. You also have a um, BNC to SO239 adapter, so you can connect your antenna to it. And finally, you have the BNC cable, sorry, USB cable to uh, connect to your PC for downloading images, downloading data to be further an analysed later on. You don't get a, a user guide, you don't get any software. All of that you download from the uh, manufacturer's website and you always get the latest uh, software So and user guide. So that's it. The unit itself, um, I said it's uh, very easy to operate, so just to go over the basic controls, you can see the display there, that's, that's the uh, standard display that comes up. On the right hand side here, you have the USB port just here, and the power switch. On the other end, you have the actual antenna port, which is where you connect the antenna under test or the coax cable. On the top side, you have a, a row of controls. Uh, the first is the run and hold. You can do single shot or continuous shot uh, running. The select button for selecting various items out of the menu. You have the screen save button. So once you've got a screen save, it will uh, save a little JPEG image of that. And the last one is to save uh, the configuration, which is uh, what saved when you power the first thing up. You can keep it in the sa same option as you had it last time. Okay. The last two buttons or controls are to actually select the various menu items and uh, navigate the way through them. So that's what those two last two do. Nice and easy. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the various uh, menu options on here and show you how easy it is to use. Um, then I'll give you a quick demo of a uh, uh, connect up to an antenna that we have here. That's one I prepared earlier. So we start off on the display your main menu options are down the left hand side and we start off at the top if I get this right around, there we go that's the centre frequency, we're currently on the 20 uh, metre band, 14 megahertz and we're going from 12.2 megahertz up to 16.2 
So we can change that if we want, we just select that and then using one of these buttons we can say let's go that way, let's go up to 15 megahertz and select that. Now we're going from 13.3 to 17.3, so that's easy. Uh, the span um, is exactly what it says. We're currently at 4 megahertz span. We can change that to, let's go down to 2 megahertz. So now we're going from 14.3 to 16.3. And something that will help you um, when you're coming to test your antennas and things, if you have a multi-band beam or multi-band dipole, is the presets here. You don't have to keep entering the start, stop frequency, center frequency, span, or anything like that. You can go along here and let's, for instance, let's can do, let's do the, the full HF band. Let's do, let's do that. We go down there, select that, and now we're going from 250 kilohertz all the way up to 29.75 megahertz. So it's quite simple. I mentioned about markers earlier on. Um, so marker one, we select that. Um, and as you can see there, we can mark one, we can position that wherever we want to uh, to get a, uh, an appropriate parameter measurement. Uh, we can do the same thing for marker two. So you have two of those, we enable that, and now we have two. There you go. So now you can sort of set your 3 dB points, your uh, three SWR points, things like that. Whatever you want to do. Um, the next item down is the left y-axis. It should be the top y-axis really. Um, if you look at that it just tells you the sorts of parameters that you want to measure. At the moment we've got that set to VSWR. Um, the, uh, so we leave that as VSWR. We can go down to the right y-axis and again we're now measuring Q. We want to see how narrow um, our bandwidth is of our antenna. Okay, So we're going to leave that as that. The next menu item is a storage facility, so you can save a file that you've recorded, um, you can load data files, you can load bitmap files, you can even browse previously saved bitmap files, a usual sort of uh, file management system. Okay, so we're just going to sort of come out of that. Um, the mode option gives you, we're currently in the scalar chart, the rectangular scalar chart. For those of you that are inclined, we can use the uh, Smith chart, there you go. So, all right, so that's whizzing around there nicely. Um, we can do a single frequency uh, option. So you can set, say, at 14.2 megahertz. We don't have any cables connected to this at the moment, um, but you can see the equivalent circuits, parallel or series circuits. Uh, you can see what parameters it thinks it's there. Um, what else have we got? We can do a cable test. Um, I'm not too sure that one, how that one works yet. I mean, that's fairly new. I have to read up on that one. Oh, there we go. Ah, it's done something. Again, we don't have a cable uh, collected, so its impedance is zero at the moment. Looking at that, and it's, uh, anyway. Let's see what else have we got. Uh, field mode is pretty much the same as the normal rectangular mode. It puts a pretty box around it, and when you save this as a JPEG file, you can put that into presentations and, and things like that. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Then you have multi-band. So this one here we have four um, bands as you can see there. We've got this one is 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 and 10. So you can have, if you've got multi-band type hole, that's what you can use to look at those all in one go. Um, we have a signal generator. We currently have 14.2 uh, megahertz power level 73 minus 73 dBm or 50 microvolts and you can change that obviously and finally is computer control I'll be doing that later on show you a little bit about that um, so we just leave that as signal generator we're going to go down to setup setup will um, do auto calibration um, you can do the VSWR circle these are the sort of things that you don't normally need to change very much unless you want to change the color theme we can do a white one to see what that looks like. Okay, and then we can, what we can then do, um, let's go, uh, just, let's go back out of that and we go back to mode, if I can get it there, and we go back to the scalar chart. There we go. That's what it looks like in white. Okay, so that's the basic controls in standalone mode. Um, now what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration of uh, an actual antenna connected to it. Okay, so I've connected this um, 
analyzer up to a little super stick antenna. At the moment I have no idea where it's uh, tuned to. I uh, just got it standing right by the side of me here. Uh, there's no ground radials or anything like that. Uh, but this is a sort of pattern that you can actually see that you get out. On the uh, left hand side you can see the VSWR going from currently from 11 to about 14.19 and the Q is on this side that's going from so it's fairly low Q, fairly broad band I would say. If I try adjusting the antenna we see what that does. Oh it goes all over the place, there we go. And now we've gone way 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 over so this automatically, so the VSWR has gone up to, oh, 99, that's no good. I'm going to move that back down again. We like that. <laughs> so, but um, you can see what the sort of graph that you get. We're coming back down quite nicely now, back to about 7, 6. So it's about a 6, 6 to 1. That's not too bad without any radial. So, so that's just, I'm standing right next to it. So I don't expect it to be any better than that. Um, so that's, that's the graph that you would get, or a typical graph that you can get. Okay, right, that's it. Now what I'm going to do is going to connect it up to a PC and show you the same sort of thing. Previously I showed you the standalone mode. Uh, what I've done now, I've connected it up to uh, my PC and it's the same um, super stick antenna as before. At the moment, um, when you start the SARC plots, which you download from the website, this is the sort of screen that you will get. Um, over here, uh, the first thing you want to do is actually connect to the uh, antenna analyzer. So once we've connected, uh, we're okay. We're not running at the moment. Um, you can have it in running in uh, single shot mode or continuous mode. We've got it in continuous. The bandwidth I'm going to set to uh, full HF. Let's see what happens. Um, so that's going from it says 16 uh, center 16 megahertz. The span is 31.9 megahertz. It starts at 100 kilohertz. So if I run this as continuous, this is what we get. Okay. So we can see here. Um, at the moment, I've just set the antenna, the super stick antenna, at a random position. But we can see uh, from here that somewhere around about here, it's got a fairly low SWR. And that says it's about 20.748, and it's got an SWR of 1.8 to 1 which is not bad um, as it stands. There's no ground, ground radials or, or anything on the antenna, but that's around about 20, uh, 21 megs, so 15 meters. Um, as it stands, we could use that. What you can do with this, we can zoom in in a minute. In a minute. So let's do, we go to the preset side again, and let's go to 15 megs and see what we get. So we're going from 19.2 all the way up to 23.2. And there we, we can see now. We've got it on auto scaling. Um, the scale on the left hand side is the VSWR, the right hand side is the impedance. So we can see around about here, 20.8, um, we've got a much nicer plot. So, yep, yeah, somewhere around about here, we should be able to use that antenna quite nicely. And a little bit of tweaking, we should be good. So that's how we um, can see things in the rectangular mode. And for those of you who are technically inclined, we can go up here and we can view, view it as a polar chart. So pretty much everything that you can do in standalone mode, you can do uh, connecting to the PC. There's the calibration, there's the markers, the various settings, scales. Um, this I haven't really played with at the moment. Uh, I, I haven't needed to play about with it again, with the calibration. Um, so that's, that's the way it goes. Again, you can, have them, you can have up to four markers on the PC side of things. So there you have it. That's, that's PC mode. Well, I hope that was a useful little introduction to our SARC antenna analyzer. So it's a new product. It's very, very well made. Um, would you want to buy one? Um, I would. Um, if you're into playing about with antennas and things like that, very, very useful gadget indeed. Um, if you're doing any sort of tune lengths of coax, things like that, really, really useful. We had an instance the other day, just as an example, uh, we had a customer who bought a Quadra amplifier, um, got it home, didn't work. He just spent like four and a half thousand pounds on this device and it's now almost rubbish. So as he was fairly close to where I live, I took this home with me and we took it around to his house and we did a quick couple of tests on his antenna and we found out his antenna was uh, pretty rubbish. It had a, like a minimum of S SWR of about five to one and the Quadra unfortunately won't match anything like that. So he now knows that he's got to go and uh, fix his antennas. So he was quite happy with that. 
So, uh, but I say it's a very useful little gadget. Uh, I would say it's really useful for any um, serious hands toolkit. So, um, come down and see us sometime if you're uh, interested. Uh, delivery will be by the end of December. So, thank you very much. I'm Steve Venner, in case you didn't get it at the beginning, G0TAN, and thank you very much for watching.